Hello, you're watching the Cloud Native Telco Summit. I'm Guy Daniels. Telcos are endlessly looking for new ways to reduce their costs and improve automation. Using cloud infrastructure has enabled some economies of scale, but there are still high hopes that AI can deliver even greater savings and innovations. AI relies on having huge amounts of data, which telcos often have, but what can telcos do if that data is difficult for AI to access? Well, joining me to discuss how legacy system data can be unlocked and support wider AI and cloud native telecom business operations are Gary McDonald, VP Product Management at Wavelo, and Robert Curran, Consulting Analyst with Apple Door Research. Well, good to see you both, and thanks so much for joining this year's summit. Um, my first question to you both is, what is the relationship between cloud native, AI, and data? Gary, can you tell us more about this relationship? Yeah, for sure. First off, thanks uh, thanks for having us, Guy. Um, I think it really is a symbiotic relationship, right? Much of the uh, telecom systems and data, uh, for the most part, already live in the cloud uh, to a degree and to kind of power the development of AI applications and the development of AI models, you really need the you know, large volume of high quality data and um, the ability to handle the spikes in the computing and processing of, of that data, whether you're, you're training the AI model or just simply drawing inferences from the data. Uh, and I think this is really where cloud native infrastructure is is more suitable, right? Um, it supports the elastic scaling up and down of compute and storage resources on demand for these models. Uh, it avoids the costly over provisioning of those resources to meet the peak demands for capacity and processing that data for AI. Uh, and also, you know, it, it allows for containerization and distribution of, of the data and the models uh, that are built out of, out of AI so that they can be accessed in pretty much any environment at any time, anywhere. Thanks, Gary. And, and Robert, as Gary was saying there, there is this relationship, isn't there, between cloud native AI and data? Yeah, very much, Guy. Um, you know, ultimately, it's really all about speed and, and flexibility uh, and ability to provide more intelligent responses to, to customer and network situations in as real time as possible. Uh, and that's, that's really the, the, the trio that we have here. Uh, as Gary's indicated, kind of cloud cloud native uh, software on on cloud infrastructure, it provides that flexibility uh, and that adaptability. But but it's not just about where you're running workloads; it's also about the whole life cycle. And so what we're seeing now is is the awareness of a combination of cloud native software, uh, the need for uh, AI that can be distributed to where it's needed, uh, both from a training and an inference point of view, uh, and then feeding that with data. That's why you get this kind of trio of, of technologies and capabilities, absolutely essential uh, to achieve that level of, of flexibility and, and, and real time this, if you like, um, for the kind of customer situations that we have today. Great, thanks, Robert. And, and Robert, let me, uh, let, let me build on this, because um, I'd like to ask you, you know, how are operators looking to deliver improved experiences for their customers by using AI? What data do they need to do this? Yeah, I think you know where we are today. We are definitely looking at a future that is uh, AI enabled and even into kind of agentic. Uh, common, a common uh, reference point here. The, the issue with that is is the way in which data is is scattered. You know, customers want and expect a level of personalization, a, a degree of immediacy, and, and that barrier, that bar, is constantly being reset by all the other providers of digital services. Uh, and so that means bringing together data, not only kind of past history for a given customer or a given service, but also network information, you know, weather data, uh, you know, segment information, all kinds of additional uh, kind of context, if you like, for, um, for a customer to make sure that at the point of interaction, uh, you get a very well-informed, very responsive, very intelligent interaction with a customer. That's really what what we're aiming to do, what telcos are aiming to do. And that means bringing all that data together. Gen AI is a critical uh, capability within that mix as well. And guess what Gen AI relies on, on bringing disparate data together at a point in time to be able to make some of those informed decisions, uh, you know, guide through a, a range of different 
um, possibilities for a customer and arrive at a, a good resolution or a good offering uh, in real time. Th- those are, I think, primarily the ways that um, that Tugs are looking to to make this experience for customers just just better, much richer, much more informed, much more personalized, uh, but using the vast amount of data um, that can be in a customer's context. Great. Thanks very much, Robert. And, and Gary, you know, what are operators doing here? What data do they need? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously they need a lot of high quality, um, you know, large volumes of high quality data, right? That is reliable, is accessible, and is really relevant to the customer experience or the operations or the business process that the operator is trying to manage. And so, you know, Robert touched on the personalization aspect, right? So having the right information at the right time that can really uh, enrich the personalization and tailoring of the uh, operator service offering to to the customer is is important. Um, and it's really about the context, right? So looking at the various business processes that an operator needs to support, if they're looking to apply, you know, greater intelligence and, and, and information and insight throughout their business processes, what is the relevant information, you know, they need at that time uh, in order to be able to enrich that process and, and offer customers a better experience by better operating, you know, uh, their business, the network, uh, and ultimately, you know, tailoring that experience to the end customer. Thanks very much, Gary. And and Gary, you you mentioned there that um, operators need access to a lot of high quality, accessible, and relevant data. So, what sort of problems do they face in trying to tap into legacy system data for AI? Yeah, I mean, when you think about you know the the you know, the architecture of legacy systems, it's very long, monolithic, very siloed. Um, access to data across those applications and systems is, is, is you know, highly constrained as a result. You're dealing with multiple vendor systems, um, which may offer different data schemas, uh, the data stored in different locations, the data might be sometimes proprietary. And so, you know, when, when we're looking at, you know, trying to get access to that data to inform these AI models, it's difficult to really kind of pull that data in and unify it in a common repository uh, and, and, you know, a common schema that these AI models can access, um, you know, to apply to the a specific operation. Uh, there's all sorts of data inconsistencies, duplication in the data, and, and even you know the process to extract that data. Uh, whether you, you know, and, and sorry, really, it's, you know, it's a mismatch in the extraction of that data between kind of the batch extraction process that happened, whether that be ETL, uh, to kind of the real time demands of the business and, and customers to support the AI model development. So again, you've got this really kind of highly constrained, highly fragmented, sometimes incomplete and inconsistent data foundation. Uh, and, and so while the operators are sitting on all of this, you know, wealth of valuable customer insights and system data and information, utilization of that data, um, you know, support their business operations and AI in particular uh, is stifled as a result. Thanks, Gary. So, um, Robert, you know, it's very difficult this, but at the same time, it's essential. Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, the first, Gary's touched on, I think, all, all the key points there, but I kind of reiterate the, the point about the amount of data um, that telcos have. That's, you know, whatever you want to do with it, whether you want to store it or you want to move it around or process it, that accumulation of data itself is a huge problem. And, and what we've seen in the past is is operators looking to, you know, run things like creation of data lakes and so on, uh, which is fine as far as it goes, but that can often be a very, very difficult, very expensive solution to the problem because it takes a long time. Uh, as Gary's indicated, trying to get a single model to make sense of all of that customer data uh, and, and related data is very is very complicated, uh, expensive, and doesn't necessarily lead you to the the right conclusion. So the the getting access to the data in time, uh, being able to bring it to where you need it in order to make some of those informed decisions uh, in real time that that's another challenge. Just accumulating all the data into one place isn't enough on its own. So it's a mix of different problems that we're seeing here. And at the same time, you know, we're seeing this this rising expectation. This is not we're not just in the analytics space anymore. We're not just looking at uh, you know customer segments that are you know tens of thousands. We're trying to get to a model where is a kind of customer segment of one essentially, and that's that's a different a different order of magnitude of problem. Uh, in terms of thinking about data. It's not just the data. It is the context. It is the, the location and the ability to bring it to, to different processes that might need it. It might not be our processes. It might not be the processes of the systems where the data resides. 
but that's what we mean when we talk about having agents being able to reach out and, and tap data that's uh, that's available to them to be able to do something that's useful and, and highly personalized for a customer. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Robert. Uh, so, Gary, let me turn it to you. You know, what is Wavelow's approach to addressing the issues here? Yeah, definitely a bit about Wavelow first. So we are the uh, telecom solutions arm of Two Cows, which for over two decades, Two Cows has been building and scaling um, internet infrastructure, powering connectivity solutions globally. And so, uh, you know, as, as the kind of telecom solutions arm, uh, Wavelow, you know, our mission really is to modernize the telecom stack with a cloud native event driven uh, modular composable architecture that removes it a lot of the complexities and barriers to innovation that carriers have um, without you know having to disrupt their existing operations. So we're um, we're actually in the process right now of launching our free your data campaign and really what that's about is uh, enabling operators to employ a more data forward approach to AI and systems orchestration. And so what that means is being able to kind of connect to the data where it lives, you know, in the cloud uh, and in various systems and applications, connect to that seamlessly um, across the fragmented systems and silos, um, convert that into, convert that raw data um, from the legacy systems into more of an event-driven format uh, that offers consistency and reliability. Um, and, you know, it, it's more ready for use across a modern uh, platform that, uh, that, that the operators are looking to deploy. So making that, accessing the data, transforming, translating that data and making it available to uh, real-time decisioning to support the training of AI models and going from kind of a more static uh, approach to more uh, of, a, of a live data feed and that then powers kind of AI insights, automation and innovation. Okay, that's interesting. Thanks, Gary. And, and you know, can you elaborate a little bit on as to uh, the primary benefits of the approach that you've taken? Yeah, I mean, the, the intent is really to help uh, operators uh, innovate their services, launch new services um, that you know take into consideration the constraints of the legacy systems that they're operating, uh, enable them to work with those legacy systems to kind of handle the real time demands of the business and, and, and of customers and help them launch new revenue models that are more dynamic and, and responsive to the market, all underpinned by kind of a cloud native, uh, AI native orchestration uh, architecture. And so, you know, we can really meet the customer where they are in terms of their legacy system modernization, um, we can help them uh, along their journey to really kind of enrich their existing business processes and systems with a more intelligent and automated AI native solution using this kind of event driven cloud native solution. Um, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, because of just the nature of event driven architecture, we can do this without disruption to the operators existing systems and operations. Okay, thanks so much, Gary. Um, and let's talk now about event-driven architectures in telecom. Robert, let's start with you. You know, is this a, a new development or they're now in more common use? Yeah, it's it's really interesting, Guy. Um, uh, event-driven architectures are something that's relatively new in telecom, um, but incredibly well proven in, in other uh, industries that have been you know, digitizing, digitalizing uh, for some time, particularly, you know, finance, banking, you know, retail, uh, you know, plus your, your typical hyperscalers, the Netflixes and so of this world. We're moving from a, a time when uh, we used so-called service-oriented architectures, SOA. That was pretty commonplace for the last 20 years or so as a sort of go-to uh, architectural choice. But, but that was really created in a sort of pre-cloud, certainly pre-digital first uh, context that we have today. So event-driven architectures are certainly becoming much more uh, much more relevant. And, and telecom is just behind the curve, basically. The examples from other industries are very, very strong. Um, just, again, the question of scale comes into play here. Uh, you know, telecom likes to think it's an industry that has a lot going on. Some of these companies are processing a million events a second, a second. I mean, it was phenomenally fast. And they're using that to feed uh, data pipelines that in turn feed uh, AI that's looking for all kinds of things 
simultaneously, not only for things like dynamic pricing and, and you know, choices and preferences and options, but also things like trying to identify fraud and so on. So there's a lot of different ways to, to use this, this architecture uh, and this, these principles and to solve problems. And we are seeing it becoming more, certainly more, uh, more a feature, more relevant in telecom, uh, more examples, Wavel is, is an example today of where that's being uh, applied in, in the real telco world. Um, certainly more relevant. And that, I'd say, working backwards from the customer, back from that market of one, is certainly you know, drawing uh, more attention to, to what event-driven architectures can really do. Yeah, thanks, Robert. This is absolutely fascinating. Uh, Gary, can you elaborate more on um, event-driven architectures and, and, and what they can do for telecoms? Yeah, and I think Robert touched on it. I mean, telecoms are perhaps a little bit late to the party and, and, and not unsurprisingly, right? Um, there's a lot of risk involved in terms of the size of the operations that operators are managing. So, you know, there's perhaps a bit of, uh, you know, uh, trepidation about, you know, employing a new type of architecture rather than the traditional kind of peer-to-peer -peer API type architecture. But uh, as Robert mentioned, like there's a, a number of high profile uh, companies in kind of the digital domain that have employed this and used this as part of their core operations, whether that be kind of Netflix from the recommendation engine and monitoring, uh, Uber from real-time analytics pricing, Airbnb from event-driven uh, messaging in the booking operation, right? And so we're starting to see more and more um, employment of uh, event-driven architecture in the telecom sector for use cases like real-time network management or more AI-based customer experience management but um, you know just I think given the scale and the size of the applications and services that the operators are running um, again there's a bit of that risk aversion but uh, it doesn't have to be that way as I mentioned earlier the, the good thing about event driven architecture is you can effectively run a different or parallel process and uh, system to your legacy stack um, without you know, interrupting the ongoing operations or, or system processing that's happening in your legacy stack. So uh, I, I expect, you know, based on uh, some of the interactions we've had, um, there's a lot of interest in how to go about deploying this in the telecom space. And, you know, I expect we'll see more and more of that in, in, in the years to come. So final question then to you, Gary, and, and wrapping up our discussion, you know, what does this approach mean for telcos in terms of their operational efficiency? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can immediately go to kind of the cost equation of that, um, you know, whether it's offering more reliability, uh, uh, you know, greater performance, but, you know, ultimately all of that impacts the customer at the end of the day and translates into uh, loyalty and perceived value on the network. So, um you know, certainly uh, operators can and are using AI to help apply that intelligence to their existing operations. I mentioned, you know, the network in terms of network performance, network uh, management, kind of self-healing of the network, traffic shaping, all those kind of things. We're starting to see more of that in the customer experience domain. Um, uh, you know, as an augmented care agent experience, offering a more tailored service to their end customer, uh, even with applications like Next Best Offer, powering sales and marketing um, with the right intelligence about, uh, you know, the particular uh, customer base that they're pursuing, uh, how they can put kind of the right offer at the right time uh, in front of that customer. So, you know, these things all amount to being much more efficient um, within the telco operation. And of course, that translates into cost reduction or cost optimization. And of course, um, you know, those that the cost optimization would be passed on to the end customer at the end of the day. And that adds to kind of the perceived value they're getting from from the uh, from the operator. Great. Well, unfortunately, we must leave it there for now. Gary and Robert, great talking with you and thanks so much for sharing your views with us today.